huge million dog. Alright guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful. I'm going to call this the last summer night of 2023. <laughs> we have made it to Thursday night, October 5th, 2023. It was 85 degrees here at Bugs in a Jar Farm today in October. It's in the 70s now. I think we might be hitting 63 degrees tonight, but old man winter is back tomorrow, right when I have a full weekend of people pouring in to enjoy the leaves and the pouring down cold, nasty rain. But before I get ready for that deluge, uh, so guys, I really wanted to do a I've been wanting to get around to making some comments about uh, that big-ass tree over there in England that those clueless morons cut down. And, uh, but things keep getting in the way. I've been so busy, like, uh, you know, trying to find modern medicines to fix my ears to... I, I, finding propane to fill my tank, finding new tires for my gas-sucking truck, uh, finishing out my two-year contract on my cell phone, on and on. You know, I am. it's taking all my time and energy, not to mention money, to keep modernity rolling along for another day. So, uh, I haven't had time to get to the big tree. And now, guys, you, you have worn me down. I'm, I'm thinking this article by physicist Tom Murphy, a big hero of Indica. Uh, he's a physicist at UC San Diego. Wrote this uh, long, involved essay, when was it? Over a week ago in this thing called, uh, this website called Do the Math. Do the Math to figure out how doomed we are. And it is making the rounds all over the doomosphere. I don't know how many of you have sent me various forms of Tom Murphy's Can Modernity Last essay saying, Sam, this is the single greatest essay explaining the collapse of global industrial civilization ever written. When are you going to cover it? So I have been worn down. I guess the dead tree is already dead. It'll have to wait for another day. And now I guess it's Manga Bay tomorrow. But I'm finally a dollar short and a day late. I'm probably the only doomer. Uh, on YouTube who hasn't covered it. This excellent uh, rant, this long, long involved essay. So I, in case you are a doomer who lives under a rock and have not already seen 20 versions of physicist Tom Murphy's essay, Can Modernity Last? Uh... I will put the link on here. You can read what all of the excitement is about. And I am going just to read maybe half of it to whet your appetite. I would suggest shutting me up and go read it yourself if you haven't read it five times already. But we're going to cover a little bit out of the beginning and the end. And you can... Uh, go on the link to find all of the uh, the minutiae and the charts and graphs and all of that in the middle. All right, Tom Murphy, what are you talking about? Can modernity laugh? Laugh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Can modernity laugh? Can modernity last? <clears throat> 
In this post, I echo the bedrock question of whether economic growth can last with the question of whether modernity can last. Okay, nothing lasts. Uh, blah, 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 then he breaks all that down. Uh, depending on definitions, modernity has been around for at least a century or as long as 10,000 years, brief in either case in the scheme of things. Nothing is forever, including the planet and everything on it, but how long might modernity last? Whether modernity can last is perhaps a more important question than whether growth can last. The fact that growth cannot last is shocking enough for many people, but it still allows mental space for maintaining our current way of life, just no longer growing. But is that even possible? I can't be as confident in my answer as I am for growth since the question of growth comes down to incontrovertible concepts and, well, math. Still, I strongly sub suspect the answer to this new question, can modernity last, is no as well. And in this post, I will expound on my misgivings. And, and guys, I am, uh, for time's sake, I, I am uh, just kind of, you know, hitting and moving along. So I'm skipping over a lot of this that you should probably check. Uh, but uh, let's start with growth and work into modernity. <clears throat> growth. We start on familiar ground. I won't rehash the arguments as he's already provided an overabundance of links to material on this subject, you know, up above in the article. If you go on the link, you'll find a million other links. For the purposes of this post, <clears throat> I will just restate that growth has been a centuries-long trend such that our energy and materials use, economic systems, political systems, social safety net systems, labor and retirement systems, and even mental frameworks have become predicated on growth. I still routinely encounter surprise and pushback to the simple and obvious statement that growth is not forever. For something that is necessarily a temporary phase, we have surely dug our claws deep and will have great difficulty letting go, as I think we must eventually do. I picture a cat shooting up a tree in fantastic form the easy direction given claws, but then getting to a great height and having no obvious graceful way down. <coughs> While adjusting to a life without growth would, would it, you know, in itself constitute a monumental challenge requiring major overhauls or abandonment of many institutions, it is at least attractive to ponder steady state approaches to life on Earth, and many have explored this space. But can we really stay up in the tree? Another useful metaphor compares the challenge of converting an airplane which must keep moving forward to stay aloft to a helicopter, which can hover 
and affecting the conversion in mid-flight without crashing. It's just not clear how this would come off. To the extent that modernity depends on growth, an open question but with no evidence to support the contrary, then modernity cannot last. But let's not give up just yet. Well, why not? Uh, modernity cannot last. To the extent that modernity depends on growth, then modernity cannot last. I think this is where I stopped reading the essay the first ten times it was sent to me. Okay, but just, you know, just for shits and grins, uh, let, let's keep uh, beating this dead horse. And we're going to look at, what a surprise, energy and fossil fuels. For anybody who does not understand this, let a physicist explain it to you. Energy has been fundamental to our story of growth. The various hockey stick curves over the last century or, or so are a reflection of energy and population. Hmm. What's more, human population, can you say 8 billion people, human population itself is a reflection of energy as mechanized, fertilized agriculture was made possible by fossil fuels. Since energy per capita has also increased, like a hockey stick, the ecological impact and many other metrics, like GDP, takes on the shape of a super exponential, still resembling a hockey stick. But energy is not the only factor in promoting growth. I would put ecological exploitation at least as high, though affected via energy, then materials, then innovation. That's right, innovation amounts to very little without a biophysical basis to exploit. It's rather typical of a human supremacist culture to elevate innovation, which most of us think of as technology, to the top of the heap. But temporary, explosive, Biophysical growth is also possible in natural systems given adequate energy and atoms without one iota of human innovation. Energy provides the motive force behind our exploits. Prior to fossil fuels, we still saw a much slower version of growth as we harnessed wind for global trade, wind and water for milling and mechanization, and gobs of solar energy in the forms of crops to feed animal and human labor. No energy, no growth, no grain, no pyramids. Fossil fuels represent such an overwhelming contribution to modernity that it is really hard to conceptualize its continuing, meaning modernity's continuing without them. I return to a familiar plot, and I'm sure we've all seen the fossil fuel plot. What goes up must come down. This is the other side of the hockey stick, otherwise sometimes known as, I call it, the bottleneck 
uh, the other side of the hockey stick, the bottleneck, whatever you want to call it, that's right around the corner. Until fossil fuels, human use of energy was tiny and in the form of human animal labor and firewood, fossil fuels will necessarily be a transit affair. Is the future a reversion to past ways or something different? We can't say. The fossil fuel spike or carbon pulse is a lonely landmark in the temporal landscape. What a strange spectacle. Imagine the Washington Monument, but without any other large structures all the way to the top. Yes, the left hand side of the spike is what all these hockey stick curves reflect. We know that fossil fuel usage will also have a right hand side that drops back to zero simply because it is a finite resource that does not permit us to draw it in some arbitrary way. The area under the curve is set and not subject to our imaginations. In the area under the curve. <clears throat> now, the modernity booster. The modernity booster, you know, which would be any politician on the planet, would say that we can't see the future and that just because the horizon to the west is clear, the eastern view may yet have all sorts of unfathomable marvels in store. It's not that I lack the imagination or can't appreciate the, the appeal of a fantastical future. I get it. I still remember how it felt to experience the magic of Christmas. What a swell fellow that Santa Claus was. Imagine myself building a rocket-powered bicycle, and even as late as 16 years old, thinking that if friction were low enough, my telescope might track the stars with no motor just by inertia. Then I learned heaps of math and physics and built a lot of very real things. I now feel much more grounded and better calibrated to the line between realistic and fantastical. <clears throat> uh, anyway, guys, I need to move ahead. Uh, Okay, uh, all right, I will not go so far as to say that we will never have a source of energy that is not part of the standard mix today. Uh, so then he talks a little bit, uh, you know, about some of the pipe dreams. Um, but I would seriously question our ability to preserve what we call modernity without fossil fuels. Not only do we lack demonstration anywhere in the world of a fossil-free modern society, we also have no clear paths to mine manufacture, transport, and feed at today's scale without fossil fuels. For instance, we have not built renewable technologies without substantial assistance from fossil fuels. Modernity rose to its current magnificence on the back of fossil fuels and could very well ride the pulse back 
to zero. Live by the sword, die by the sword. <clears throat> but energy alone is not a conclusive case. One might argue that it would indeed be difficult to maintain our present scale. Eight billion people at a high energy standard of living, but that some scaled down version of modernity is not ruled out under renewable energy, or maybe we could live the lifestyle of 1750. No fossil fuels, but still modern in a number of ways, yeah, you know, compared to cavemen. The last thing I will say about energy foreshadows the ecology section, which we're going to move to in a minute. The question is, what have we used energy to do? We have used energy to expand the human enterprise and population, knock down forests, destroy and fragment habitats, drive extinctions, and generally threaten the vitality of, of the planet. To me, solving the energy problem as fossil fuels give out is pretty frightening. How would it not simply perpetuate the ecological nosedive we have initiated? Only if we put ecological concerns above energy do we stand any chance of survival. And I can see all sorts of evidence that everyone from the global corporatocracy to every single politician on the planet, not to mention 99% of clueless morons voting for the politicians and buying the products, uh, have ever even considered putting ecological concerns above energy. You know, I, I, I just put $500 worth of propane into a tank eight feet from right here. And you should have seen when he undid the hose, all of this methane that went spewing into the air. Uh, okay, but in summary, energy. Number energy is fundamental to modernity. Energy is responsible for the human population surge and other hockey sticks. Energy cannot continue increasing into the future. Energy has been utterly dominated by a temporary spike of fossil energy. Energy may not permit modernity's continuance in non-fossil form, and energy powers ecological devastation independent of its source. And then uh, he spends a lot of time in the middle on uh, recycling, talking, uh, he gets uh, so I'm going to skip over all of this stuff about recycling. Uh, let's see. I just want to read one. Okay. He starts out talking about recycling these renewable energies and then recycling more generally. I, I just want to touch on this one paragraph, which is really the most important one. It needs to be understood that renewable energy is not actually about saving the planet. Clearly, clearly, renewable energy will ravage more land 
and habitats in pursuit of materials. It is really, meaning <clears throat> renewable energy, is really about preserving modernity in the face of CO2. Let's be clear on the goal here and how ultimately narrow and misguided it is. Which is more valuable, modernity or the ecological health of the planet? Okay, and then we're going to jump ahead. Uh, all right, we're going to jump ahead to biodiversity and ecological vitality, which is more what uh, I talk about here at Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> to me, this biodiversity is the non-negotiable element. Humans are one of many species on a planet that has developed a complex web of interdependent life. We have barely scratched the surface of understanding the connections and cooperations in the living world and likely never will have a full grasp. We therefore depend on the health of countless other species in ways that we do not fathom. Meanwhile, the trends are alarming. Extinction rates are roughly 1,000 times higher than background rates. The average decline in over 20,000 vertebrate populations spanning thousands of species is about 70% over the last 50 years. Wild land mammal mass is down to 20% of its pre-modernity level to the point where only two and a half kilograms of land mammal mass, that's about five pounds, exist in the wild for every human on the planet. The associated chart below induces pants wetting alarm. This is talking about the crash in biodiversity over the last 50 years. It is a cliff edge and forces us to wonder how modernity could possibly be the correct path. The dots are not difficult to connect. Deforestation, habitat destruction and fragmentation, overhunting and overfishing, pest elimination, climate change, humans outcompeting other life for food, pollution of streams and landscapes, microplastics, and, and, and all of these things contribute to declining animal populations on a march toward extinction. And I should stress that it is not dominated by CO2, so renewable energy does not fix it. At what point will the fabric of life be too torn to maintain its integrity? Almost like the fashion statement of numerous rips in the legs of jeans, pretty soon we will no longer be wearing pants. Put simply, modernity has come at the expense of ecological health and the vitality of the community of life. It is not at all clear if modernity can exist any other way. Modernity could very well be a self-terminating prospect for exactly this reason, as humans cannot survive without a functioning ecosphere. Right now, the ecosphere 
is gasping for breath, I would say that it's on life support or in the ICU, but no, that would imply concern and remedial action. No, it's just bleeding out in a ditch as we motor past, largely oblivious to its condition as we inflict even more damage. And then he gets a little philosophical. Uh, let's see. Do I get into the philosophical underpinnings? I need to see if I'm talking to myself. Nope, we are already at 30 minutes. So uh, if you want to get all philosophical about it uh, and of course at the very end uh, he gets into a little bit of hopium uh, uh, just just a, a uh, Couple, uh, just a couple of notes on my way out. Any systems, any system such as modernity that puts short-term human concerns above all else to the exclusion and detriment of the community of life will surely fail, taking many species down with it. There you go. Uh, the combination, you know, in humans, of capabilities in, of, and supremacy is the losing ticket. There you go. Uh, a human supremacist thinks nothing of clearing a forest for crops, exterminating pests, enslaving animals for work or food, damming a river for energy, killing a bear who has attacked a human, animal research for the remote possibility of someday treating a human disease, scraping the ocean floor for minerals, destroying desert communities of life with solar installation, killing countless birds with domestic cats, speeding hulks such as planes, cars, and windmills, and as we saw last week, and even house windows. Why ever wouldn't we do these things? Ah, uh, one human life, especially a child, is worth any number of frogs, eels, meerkats, chickadees, or deer in the human supremacist mind a point I will revisit in a future post. <clears throat> to me, it is, this, it is this attitude, human supremacy, that defines modernity more than anything else. It is this mythology that encourages us to seek ultimate mastery by exploiting as much as we can using whatever food we can find or grow, whatever energy we can harness, whatever materials we can scrape at the expense of any other species or community of life. I suspect that without this attitude, we would not live a high energy technologically oriented life, or even practice grain agriculture, based on the fact that cultures who maintain humility in relation to the community of life did not embrace these practices 
only to be overrun by those who did. Modernity would seem to require putting humans first at any cost. And then he actually uh, unconvincingly at the end tries to scrape up a little bit of false hopium. Anyway, amen, Brother Tom, and I hope that the dozen of you who sent me that are are happy, and now that was about a third of it that I read, so go on the link and read the rest and all those other links, and uh, I think I have to, uh, the little dog says, I have to go get his factory farmed chicken ready for his dinner. Bye, guys.